aging in the United States, frankly, gets a pretty bad rap. Most of the American public, they really think aging is an individual issue. When the experts in the aging field know that successful aging really uh, is much more contextual. It has to do with uh, social determinants of health. It has to do with other issues inside society at large. It's not solely up to what the individual believes. GSA has been absolutely honored to work over the past 36 months with seven other aging organizations on a project that we collectively call the Reframing Aging Initiative. Taking on this idea of reframing aging is one way to address that inherent ageism that exists and to ensure that we're creating a society that works for everyone. Longevity has been in GSA sites from the very, very beginning. Are we giving people when we're giving them as we would anticipate more time? And it goes without saying that this should be time spent being healthy. The purpose of the Gerontological Society of America is to foster research in all of the disciplines that want to join with us. It's to promote education in gerontology, to stimulate conversation among researchers and educators and professionals, and also encourage the application of research knowledge for the formation of public policy. And GSA is very active from an advocacy standpoint, advancing and supporting issues that relate to uh, appropriate funding for NIH in general and NIA in particular, as well as supporting a large number of different activities happening uh, in Congress. Uh, we are a member of multiple coalitions, uh, some of which we are the lead on, um, serving on their executive committee, others of which we are uh, just active participants in. We have the well-known and well-established journals of gerontology. We have now added another journal. It's an open access online journal. It's called Innovations in Aging. It's only in its second year, so it's a little bit early to say how, how uh, big its impact will have but I expect it will because it's interdisciplinary. GSA uh, has always had an international reach. We have close to one-fifth of our membership from other countries. Last year, we hosted the World Congress, the IAGG, and I think this actually uh, contributes to increasing our global reach. The IAGG meeting was extremely successful. I think it was a wonderful opportunity for GSA to have to host that meeting. There were over 6,000 participants, and I truly believe we gave our members an opportunity to share their research with people across the world, and then to also meet people who are doing similar work. And I think it helped establish new relationships and relationships that are really gonna continue the GSA organization continues to develop, I think, really innovative tools and resources because we have the input from a variety of different members and different disciplines, and that makes a big difference. Aging is more than just healthcare, it's a little bit of everything today. Over the past few years, the National Adult Vaccine Program has really led what is now also referred to as ICAMP, Immunizations, Champions, Advocates, and Mentors Program. It's been an amazing program with amazing resources that are available online and accessible and allows people to really help overcome the many barriers to adult immunizations within their work sites. As a result of research done by members and as a result of uh, input from an expert advisory board, we have developed a whole new model of care related to earlier detection and diagnosis of patients with cognitive impairment. It's called the CARE model, K-A-E-R. Kickstart the conversation, assess uh, for cognitive impairment, evaluate and determine if there, the diagnosis needs to, to be made, and if so, refer that individual for appropriate care in the community, getting them connected with the right sort of, of resources. We have developed an extremely robust kit of resources uh, available uh, free of charge uh, to GSA members. It's uh, on our website. This is a, another area where we have had an extraordinarily uh, robust interest group that has developed around uh, treatment of patients with Alzheimer's disease. But interest groups are that place where a lot of the interdisciplinary research, networking, and collaboration happens. And uh, I know many GSA members are involved in that, and I think they find them to be of extraordinary value. 
Our main push in the last year has been to update the governance structure of GSA in order to increase members' service opportunities, in order to promote interdisciplinarity, and also to provide us with a board that can hold uh, strategic discussions and set strategic directions. I truly believe that this review and the recommendations coming from the review are going to help us be an organization that works more efficiently and at the same time is able to get all the work done and give our members all of the things we've always given and done while making us more facile for how to work in the current world. As we look to the future, GSA wants to continue to, uh, to be that organization that cultivates leaders, whether it's in the area of Alzheimer's disease and related dementia, whether it's in the area of, of bone health, whether it's in, in the area of caregiving, uh, whether it's the longevity economy, um, you name it, GSA members are there leading those efforts. And as we approach our 75th anniversary in 2020, we are recommitting to that and we want to make sure that we take every step needed to uh, prepare GSA for the next 75 years, to continue to be the leaders in interdisciplinary collaboration, to continue cultivating the next generation of leaders. We are able to cultivate and support the next generation of leaders through our Emerging Scholars and Professionals organization. There are many, many bright days ahead for the society and it's an, an honor to see everything that the society is doing to help improve the lives of adults as they age.